Hey, I'm Travis from Coheed and Cambria, and you're listening to Rhino Radio. The owner of sitting with Travis of Coden Te- Cambria. Yes, I'll mess something up. Okay, <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 I, it's you know what? That's a lot. That's a lot at once. So. Yeah, how you doing, man? Good, doing Good. well. You know, we've been enjoying being out here. We've uh, we've been out with uh, the band Sean for um, oh, I'd say 10 days now. We've been out here, um, or the whole thing is 10 days. So we've been out here for eight days, and we got two days left. And we did about eight shows. We will have done eight shows. This is the uh, second to last show. It all merged with the release of the latest oh, yeah. album, Unheavenly yeah. Creatures. Yeah, we, we released the record right before flying over here. So two was days that intended? Before. Is it something to say about the local audience? Is it because we need more support or because you like us more? Nah, you know, it's just it how it's it's really how it worked out. We we like it here <laughs> just fine, but it it was how it worked out. You know, we did a big US tour in the summer. Uh, with Taking Back Sunday, and it was incredible, but we, we went all over the place. So, you know, with the record being, you know, being an upcoming thing on that tour, we started to play um, two of the songs during that tour. And uh, and then we went and over did some Canadian dates, and we kept those two songs in there and a few other, but we were kind of getting ready for the record to come out, so it was only fitting that we came over here you know, now to do it. And and we stuck with doing a shorter tour for now because hopefully we come back over and do some mainland Europe and stuff. And, you know, because the album's getting overwhelmingly positive results. So That's hopefully great. people will want us to come back and, okay. you know. And this one, just like the previous ones, except for one, they're all part of the same story, prequels, sequels. Yes. All it, merging into one. Except for, yeah, you're correct, except for the last record. Um, this record is almost like its own... Uh, it's 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 part of it, but it's like its own spin-off. Like it, it's all connected, but um, you know this this record in particular has a whole set of new characters that are developed within it and will continue to be developed. Okay, so as a fan of either books, films, stories in general, do you like prequel, sequel, spin-offs? Are you? Oh, absolutely. I I fall for all of those with with my favorite. You know, franchises, if you will. What's your favorite prequel, sequel, spinoff? Um, you know, I I really like what uh, you know, and I I can't say that uh, movies always nail it for his uh, work, but a lot of Stephen King um, books that that will either you know have characters that. Not that they're exactly prequels, sequels all the time, but it does so fit into that world. category. Yeah, it's it's all part of this world. So in a sense, it is. And um, you know how he would have characters from some of the short stories that would continuously come back in, and you he, you see the development of those characters. I could see a lot of that in what you know in the Coheed world and the development and stuff. And I know that Claudio and his wife Chandra have been a fan of Stephen King's work. So I just use him as an example because that even does fit into movies. You know, not that like I said, they always nail it with the movies. But I am excited they have Pet Cemetery coming out in the spring, and and it's gonna remake. And um, you know, I actually uploaded, uh, downloaded the uh, book, and uh, Michael C. Hall is reading it. So okay, another Dexter. series. What's that? Another series that um, recently got a new chapter is The Purge. Oh yeah. Do you believe that? Off that uh, question, are people good or are they just scared of, of the punishment? No, I believe that there is actual uh, good. I believe there is genuine evil, and there are people that uh, are mentally ill or, you know, to the point of if they don't get help, they can do some pretty fucked up things, you know. Um, uh, but I do believe in genuine evil as well. Um, you know, I believe in balance, and uh, <clears throat> within that balance, I think there is genuine good out there. I was actually reading a really interesting book, um, and not that I would agree with all of his uh, beliefs, but it's, um, uh, you know, Jordan Peterson, who's like, so you know, you're familiar with that name? He's like, it's this book, 12, 
12 uh, rules for life, and I've just been reading it. And like I said, you know, I don't agree with everything, but some really intriguing, um, int it's like really intriguing standpoints and um, points that he makes about how even when we're not afraid of the rules or what the consequences of the rules, deep down, for the most part, humans in a lot of scenarios would want to do the better thing. Okay. I believe that, you know, I truly believe outside of any religion or anything like that, that there's something that's pretty much in most of us that, that knows the boundaries. And that's out of a heaven and hell or, or, you know, afterlife, you know, none of that included. Just purely knowing as a human what's going to harm someone, what's better, you know, those kind of things like that, that you want to make those choices. Okay, I'll just throw in a curveball just to leave you with that for after it. But the definition of good and the benefit of society changes from one society to the other over time as well. So yeah. Something Absolutely. that might be considered good right now might be bad in a few years or yeah. was considered bad a few years ago. Well, <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. But I mean, I think, I think that it's like, yes, there's a lot of gray areas. But at the same time, you know, when you think of things that genuinely will harm someone or will be destructive to, per se, a relationship or destructive to relationships of, you know, whatever, be your coworker, be, you know what I mean? Like those things are just there. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't acceptable. I mean, maybe, yeah, it was acceptable to throw somebody in a pit and have them fight an animal, you know what I mean? But clearly a lot of people were probably standing around going, this is fucked up. You know what I mean? This is fucked up. Why are we doing like, you know, a lot of Roman, cult, you know, like ancient Roman culture and things that went on, like there were, there were probably a lot of humans that were just like, yeah, something doesn't sit right here, you know? So I don't know. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's funny you ask something like that when I'm reading about these things. And I, I guess it just kind of made me really think about that. Like, um, you know, is there that good in most people? I, I truly believe there is. Okay. That's a good positive note. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to merge the two, the cinematic world and the musical world, um, I think a few good years ago, there was a talk about turning the stories behind the albums to a film. There was some sort of a, a concrete talk about it, but I haven't heard something about it recently. So is there actually going to be a film about the Amory Wars? Well, there are things in the works. There's nothing that I can really talk about right now, but there are things, there are always things there. And I know that that would work very well, um, you know, and especially, you know, any of the stories, but I mean, I could see that specifically with this record, what we're touring on and what Claudio and Chandra wrote as a story. I mean, it, you know, um, the character build up, the suspenseful moments, all that, you know, um, I think that it would work perfectly in, in all those platforms, but they would have to start way before this. You know, I get ahead of myself, and I think, you know, even because, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with our records, but we had a record, uh, two records, if you want to be precise, uh, called The Afterman, and that was one of my favorite stories that is in this whole um, mythos, if I guess you'd say. And, uh, and you know, and the Amory Wars itself, like, has yeah, there's just so much to develop on that I, I could definitely see it being, uh, whether it be TV show or. So is that the reason why we're still waiting? Is it just too complicated to, to try to figure it out? Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it all started with a band called Shibuti. Well, yes, that was that was early on. Um, I think I joined at the tail end of that, but you know, it's funny that's always mentioned. Uh, but it really, Coed and Cambria is a band that was created in 2001. And when we took on the name Coed and Cambria, that's when we became this band. And that was, and that was the exact lineup that the band was. And really, it was Josh joining what was already an original lineup. Hi. And he joined um, in 2001, I believe, maybe even the end of 2000. But uh, and it was me. Uh, and Claudio, of course, uh, Josh, and uh, our original bass player, Mike Todd. And uh, 
that was Kobe. That was when we decided that we were going to what you know what and to say what direction we were going. And like we we were all over the map still, kind of musically, but at the same time we had kind of developed ourselves into you know what we wanted to stick with and represent of ourselves as on the road. And that's when we decided we we're going to take it on the road and everything. So I'd say really that's where it all started. Yeah. You know, Shibuti and numerous other band names and stuff like that. They were bands that, that everybody was part of when we were in high school and stuff. And yeah, all those bands play an important part to it. But, you know, Coheed itself was, was developed at that yeah. time. The reason I mention it, because recently I was exposed to, I don't remember if it was you or Claudio that mentioned not really feeling too confident or comfortable with what Shibori was, partially because of the reception. So it's about, I wanted to ask about you accepting yourself even though it was Shibori, because I think you didn't get a lot of recognition from fans, but still it was part of you, it was who you are, and then you took it not too far from that and became co-ed. So do you sometimes go back and say, even though I wasn't accepted, even though I felt maybe outcasted, I was still me and I embraced that. Yeah, we've always done that. We've had to do that within Coheed. I think that I'm answering your question right. We, you know, in certain ways, especially with the concept involved and just how kind of different we've been musically, uh, all around, all the whole spectrum, just everything going on musically for us has been kind of outside the box in a lot of ways. And so, excuse me, um, I eat those uh, jelly candies. They were delicious. Um, but uh, so anyway we've had a kind of uphill battle with that like trying to just like stand strong and be ourselves and not worry about what anybody's thinking and and I, I think that you're right I think that it's as early on as a band Shibuti or any of the bands that we were in at that time because it was always we are who we are and we have been since we were younger and we are eternally developing into ourself. I mean, I, I could be the, the cliche band guy and say our new record is our best record, but, I, and I just did. And I truly mean it though, because we finally are more comfortable with who we are musically, and we finally are more, you know, better. And that's what happens. So when we became Coheed from Shibuti, um, which there are other names in between there. We didn't know, we were searching for the identity and Claudio had this side project that had the concept involved and, he, and it was Coheed and Cambria and we, we adapted the name and when we adopted the name and we adapted that, we adopted the, the story to go along with it and I think that was a place where he was really comfortable in lyrics and songwriting, so it worked. But that was just a step. Yeah. That was just a step forward. We've been... I don't mean to go on a tangent, but we've been in this battle since then. Yeah. So, and it's not ending, you know. So We're still defending the honor of what the band is. And, so is it more about what you feel inside or still what you get? It's both, back? It's, it's both. It's, it's, and it's trying to balance that it's both. It's, yes, it's the feedback. Yes, it's what we feel inside. It's also, you know, what we, um, what we feel, you know, outward and the reception that comes back. So that goes back to the feedback. I mean, you know, it's it's how the fans receive it is like the most important even before because we have fans that have stuck by us and that's why we're still here. And so when those fans receive an album as well as they are right now, um, first off, it's a relief. But second off, it's like, okay, well, our fans are happy and that was the most important thing. And then we're trying to get new people involved, you know? And I think that's any band or any artist. That's what they do. But we have, we're lucky enough to already have our fans. And let's face it, we put things out there sometimes where it's, you know, you get complaints and you get people that are, but that's also, you know, we're putting out what is inside and what we want to play. And so it's not going to always be accepted, even by the, the, the biggest fan in the world. Okay. And with Koei giving some um, light on Shibuti, there are some rumors online about uh, a, reun a, reuni a reunion of Shibuti, even got the name Rebooty. Is it something that's going to happen? Are there songs to be played on stage? Never heard of that. Okay. And, uh, so your comments on that? Uh, I don't see that. No, it's not going to so, happen? You know. Okay. Uh, it depends. It was, yeah, we were, uh, no. No? Okay. No. And I mean, there were some great songs back then. I mean, we, God, there were songs that we recorded even when we were in high school and stuff. <laughs> like, some of them I'd never want to come <laughs> to the surface. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I... What Coheed is is just very distant. Those were building blocks to 
who we became, but, you know. And I know building blocks even to a lot of the songs that Claudio wrote when he was younger and stuff. But like I said, I even joined at the tail end of a lot of that, the Shibuti world. And so, you know, a lot of those songs were more his building blocks, you know. Not that, it these, was never not that all these aren't, but I mean, you know, like, but it was, it, when you asked me to comment on if somebody was going to do something with any of that material, I mean, I think I could answer for him, no. <laughs> but beyond that, I mean... <clears throat> I, I don't have any feeling about it, really. Okay, and feelings about other songs. Um, everybody knows Welcome Home. Is it is it some sort of a love-hate relationship with that song? I know you still finish most sets with it. Is it some sort of a Stockholm Syndrome with that song? No, I, we still enjoy playing it, you know? Um, and, it, and it's still, it's really the crowd interaction. It goes back to what you said, the, the feedback from them and how they receive it is what makes us excited. Okay. Um, because there's some bands that retired some songs, even though they were like their biggest songs. Um, Paramore, well, yeah, I mean, like, Misery Business. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, who did? Paramore. Oh, they 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 retired, retired some yeah. song. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I don't foresee <laughs> like us something. retiring it. I think that's that would be a little extreme for us to do as of now, but. Um, who knows? Maybe someday it wouldn't be in a set. I mean, I think that a lot of people want to come out to hear it, so we don't want to disappoint people too, you know. And it's clearly like uh, still a fan favorite, so we're fine with it. We have fun with it. Like I said, as long as we can, you know, pick up on the fun they're having, we have it. You know, it's great. And some fun stories that I've heard already from the other side is of a band called I the Mighty. Yeah. That they keep telling about how they were inspired by you guys and then I think they even started uh, distributing CDs outside your shows and then they actually met you. So how's that meeting we someone? We toured that, with them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Was Glass Joe as well, I think? Yeah. Yeah, we did a so tour. Full tour but we did a tour with them before that and they're all really nice guys and you know, I mean, it's really, I mean, they're a great band. So it's like when, when people play as well as they do and, and, you know, write good songs and stuff and they tell you that they're, you know, that you're their influence, it's, that's an honor, you know? So, yeah. And they had an actual good conversation where they just stuttering and trying to, to find something. No, to say no, a no. I don't think that, that we made them feel awkward in that sense ever. I mean, you know, once you're together with somebody on the road from quite some time, even if you start out like that, you're going to end up, you know, you're going to end up on a even level, you know, and nobody's going to be stuttering over their words. And if you still are by, by a month or five weeks, then you probably just didn't come around and talk to anybody you know what I mean I mean I, I, I actually I'll correct myself on that like we've gotten a tour with some bigger bands and you don't get to see them as often and some bands will fly in and out and so when you do actually get around them you know like bands like Iron Maiden and stuff like that you can be a little bit more like I, I did I definitely I, I remember saying some stupid shit just because I was like you know oh man I've had a lot of moments like that with a lot of musicians I respect especially if alcohol was involved so you know like you end up saying something stupid and jittery but when it comes to like a tour that we would do just because you know the tour I'm thinking of even with Glassjaw and, and I the Mighty it was it was a great tour and it was you know fairly bigger rooms in the states but it was it was like you know our touring is kind of like a family atmosphere where everybody's going to interact no matter what like you're back here right and we're going to see all the other band members at least five, six times today because we're going back and forth. You know, you and I are doing this interview in here and Claudio just almost walked in and could have been one of the other band members from another band. You know, that's how it works. So you start to have a, a dialogue regardless. And we could be pretty shy. So, you know, sometimes people will just be like, you know, oh, I didn't get to talk to you much, the tour, and I'll be like, you know, sorry, I usually either finish the show or go straight to my bunk, but if we're hanging out, I'm usually just hanging out in the bus a little bit, so it's not party time excellent, but um, I think that those guys, God, I went off on a big long t tangent here, didn't I? But I think those guys and numerous bands that we tour with, um, yeah, we, we have a relationship with where they're not going to feel overwhelmed or stuttery as you said okay and are you guys going to be home for halloween 
Yeah. Do you have any big plans or any? Yeah, my kids were going to do like a Star Wars theme thing. Okay. Who are you going to be? I think that Claudio's even. My son has given me. <laughs> he even went to the point of saying, "You could be the Sarlacc pit." I was like, "Wow, that's amazing. That's I don't know how to take that. That's kind of insulting." But uh, <laughs> but he was just you know I think that he figured out that he wants me to be Luke Skywalker and because he's got a little Darth Vader. Ooh. So you know it's kind of a fun, okay. funny like switch up, <laughs> and I think my daughter. Uh, Oh, I know my daughter's going to be an Ewok. Okay. So. Okay. Any future plans? I know that the album was just released about a week ago. I think it was last weekend. Unless yeah, no, the last Friday. Like last Friday. Yeah. So do you already have something in the works? Either a big tour, DVD. I know you released a DVD a few years ago. Anything well, for the new year, would I would... Matt, I would hope that we're just going to keep going out there and playing the songs from this record. And no plan for a DVD as of now, but we're always filming everything. We're out filming everything uh, going on on the road. We have Earn with us. So there's plenty of footage always out there, fly on the wall stuff. Not that half of it's not boring as shit, but there's some really fun stuff too. So fun stuff. So I'll say. <laughs> okay, anything else you want to add to fans and listeners out there? No, man. I, if you haven't heard the record, please check it out. Uh, we have never been so proud and yeah there's that cliche thing but we really have we've developed to who we are um, after all these years and I think we're more comfortable than ever and this record is uh, is something to show for like it, it shows that I think okay thank you very much for your time thank you